Today in art, we are gonna make this cute, no drama, easy llama. So for your materials, you'll need a white piece of paper, of course, a pencil to draw with, that black Sharpie to outline with. If you don't have it, you can always use a regular black marker, and then something to color with, your crayons, your markers, or even if you have watercolor paint. Pause the video, get your materials, and let's get started. To begin with your llama, you are going to start by having your llama page vertical, putting your paper with one, two, three, four fingers, making a dot, and that tells you, I don't really want my llama's head to go much higher than that. And I'm gonna put my hand somewhat in the middle and I know my llama's body is gonna kind of curve around that, like a really big upside down U. But I'm gonna use what I sometimes call a scalloped line, which is just a bunch of curves. And that's gonna be for my llama's body. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that dot. And to get my llama's ears, I'm gonna put my two fingers diagonal pointing to the corner. I make a mark outside of it. And I want his ears to be about the length from my knuckle to my finger. And I wanna think of um, kind of a rounded shape and a copycat shape inside. And I'm gonna repeat on the other side. Two fingers pointing to that diagonal, make a line, make a line from the knuckle to the finger and do my very best to curve it and make it symmetrical with the shape inside. Okay, now I have his ears. His eyes are easily four fingers down. So I know I'm gonna have his ears about, or his eyes right about here. So let's do that again. Four fingers wide, that will be his forehead. Underneath that space are gonna just be two simple curves for his eyes with some cute little eyelashes. Now you guys are all super creative out there. If you want to add some open eyes, I had a student do one eye open, one eye closed. However creative you want to get with your llama's expression is totally awesome with me. Underneath his eyes, of course, is gonna be that mouth and nose. We're going to aim to make an oval and I want it to be definitely as wide as my fingers and maybe again, a little bit less than my finger to my knuckle and shape. So I'm just gonna kinda do my best to make an oval and inside it, I'm gonna make a heart. Now if you want, and you don't want it to be a heart cause that's too adorable for you, you can make it just an upside down triangle, that's okay. And then to show the top of his mouth, it's gonna come all the way around. Watch that again, it's gonna curve and go all the way around. So you have the top of his mouth, the bottom of his mouth, his eyes, his ears, that was pretty easy. Those llamas are super cute and furry. So get some of that scalloped wavy line wherever you think it needs to be. I'm gonna put a little bit underneath his chinny chin chin um, for your llama. Llamas are really great at carrying things. So we're gonna add a strap going in one direction. Kind of like a diagonal. And then I'm gonna do my very best. It might crop off and have a strap going in the other direction. So it's kind of like a V in this corner. And I'm actually going to change it up as I step back from it and have it go in front. So down below, this is my llama's fur and then his strap is there. You can add on the strap, maybe um, some tassels or something. Again, 
get creative. So I'm gonna add little triangles with the lines for the tassels. I don't have to do a lot, um, just kind of equally spaced out a design. I'll do a little bit on here, but these ones are gonna be cropped off from the bottom. Now, in this lesson, we are focused on not only this adorable llama, but we want to um, draw some lines and patterns for him. So starting at the top, I'm thinking I'm gonna make about eight different lines or patterns spaced out. I'm gonna start with a wavy line. We talk about that in art class. A straight line going through picking up so it doesn't draw through the llama. My zigzag line. My dotted line, and I'm gonna keep it open so I can color the circles something different. My spiral line, which is always the favorite one for me. I'm just gonna do a couple small ones. And then from here, I can repeat, I can mix it up. So maybe this one I'll do like a curly Q one. This one I'm gonna do straight line joined with the dotted line. Over here, I'm gonna draw some hearts in a line. Have fun and be creative and original in your line design. Now that you've got your llama, you're gonna get your Sharpie and outline everything. There you go. Now that I have him outlined, I'm going to go back and erase some of that pencil. Okay, I had to erase because sometimes my Sharpie lines get a little crazy. Um, if you're ever erasing and your paper rips, always remember to put the tape on the back because it will ruin your artwork on the front. Now what we're gonna do is color our llama. So using the crayons, I got a whole bunch, 96 to be exact. Um, you're gonna wanna pick out a neutral color. Your llama is um, not you know, bright purple or green, I'm shooting or aiming um, for you to create a llama in a neutral color. So I'm gonna go with a light brown and don't get angry about that because I want that pop of color behind. So if you're like, I want my llama to be super purple, but if we have all those bright colors out there, it might kind of camouflage or blend in. So I'm gonna go for a neutral color because even though purple is an awesome color, we don't see purple llamas, and we're not going to see animals like dogs, purple or green, which would be amazing. They're brown, black, gray or white, which or some kind of tan, which is what's called a neutral color. So I'm going to very lightly color 
in brown. I'm not gonna color dark in crayon because I don't want it to be a dark brown. So I'm just kind of pressing lightly with the pressure. So I explain it this way. If I'm pressing hard, I get a dark color. And if I lift up the pressure and I press light, you can see it fades away to almost nothing. That's how light I want. I want it somewhere in that middle color. So you should be using a light pressure that's not hurting your hands, not scribbling, staying inside the llama, staying inside that direction, and coloring a nice fluffy llama. I'm gonna stop about halfway and switch to pink. I am going to have my llama have pink cheeks, which is a choice. You don't have to do that. A pink nose and pink ears. And if I would have kept going, I would have colored with this brown and not had space for that adorable pink cheek. All right, so I've got my cute brown llama. I'm gonna leave his nose white. Again, that's up to you. And now I get to add the color, baby color. So you can color in markers and have a bold contrast against that light, fluffy, cuddly llama. Or you can continue with some really bright, awesome colors to pop it out. I'm gonna start with re-outlining this in red. And then I'm gonna take a red and color that section red. And I'm gonna continue this kind of style of marker and crayon throughout. And I want this coloring to be a little bit darker pressure than the llama, so that shows up. And if you want, you can do all color with markers. So here's like a purple, and I could color this whole section in purple and mix it up. But doing this, I'm like, wow, that purple really pops out my red not so much so I might want to go back and get some color there you can also use a watercolor paint if you have that um, at home for the background so I'm not a huge fan of how that purple turned out so what can I do I can change the direction which is called a crosshatch style and try to fill in the reason I'm not a fan of coloring large areas in marker is they always look like there's areas of dried out marker. Maybe it's just my markers used and abused. Um, but I don't find it as colorful. But now my red looks pretty bland, so I better go back and add on top of that. And then, like I said, if you have some um, watercolor paint, you can use that. Make sure it's some good watercolor paint. Um, I've noticed a couple brands are very transparent, which means you can kind of see through them. Uh, um, I'm gonna keep this kind of crazy technique of marker lines going, because it's the style I started. Everybody's got a style, so whatever yours is, finish it all the way down to the end, making it bright, making it colorful, and making that Llama pop out. So I'm just gonna go through and make sure I get all those colors. 
So this is an interesting area because I'm like, where do I stop? So I'm gonna color these in orange. And then, I'm going to get an orange crayon. and mix some crayon in the middle and see how I like that. So I have some orange and I'm gonna pop out some blue. to just make your own line where the color will end if that happened to you. So getting that color in the background really makes um, your artwork come to life. Let's do green, baby green. Thinking of colors I haven't used. And I'm gonna keep that green in color and let that be kind of like the stop line and then switch back to my marker technique. Mixing it up and getting wild with crayon and colored pencil. Crayon and marker. <laughs> A pink marker and then thinking what colors I have up there I think I want some blue to pop down here. So I'm going to do some blue around the hearts. done coloring the background don't forget I'm gonna do orange about the strap Boys and girls, we've almost completed our llama. The only thing we need to do is make sure our name is on it. I did this lesson with my students on Zoom for an Art to Remember fundraiser. And for those that weren't able to join us, I did this recording for them. And I wanna make sure your name is on it. Art to Remember is a fundraiser where we have our artwork printed on objects so you can see I have one of um, my kids place mats that they did hand prints in kindergarten you can get your artwork printed on like a place map um, there's jewelry and necklace and so many different other things here is a card I love the cards they're great for um, students writing thank you notes if you look at the back art to remember is the fundraiser we're using that's their logo check them out online they're awesome and when we create these lessons every year for the fundraiser, we want to have our name on it and the year so the parents can remember. But if you have it near the edge of your work, it will get cut off. So I recommend someplace along here um, on his 
strap, writing your name. My name is Mrs. Samsel. And the year, I don't wanna to be too close to the bottom, so I'm just gonna stick it over here. 2021. There you have it, your finished llama. Thank you.